You know, there are a lot of videos on the Internet. Facebook is overflowing with videos. And some of my staff say, Mari, you need to make videos. You need to be out there. I don't feel that way about it. If I don't have anything to say, I'm just not going to film for the sake of filming. Something really got me angry and upset that I saw today. And it has to do with the word hate. Because you need to know this is not a game. You know, the generation that I belong to had the luxury of reading the book of Revelations, like the way we would see a summer blockbuster monster movie. It was off in the future. The idea of the mark of the beast or people being economically persecuted for not being Christian in America was just science fiction. But it's up close and it's real. And here's my first point. You need to understand that the statement I'm about to make is self-canceling and contradictory in the minds of some. But think about it before you reject it. The people who are controlling the word hate are filled with hate. They're accusing everyone but themselves of hate. Likewise, they're accusing everyone else of racism except themselves. And they're willing to forego any sort of rational interchange and exchange of ideas. Now, Google just said that they're going to persecute a website for hate speech. Turns out that the hate speech is merely a political viewpoint that disagrees with theirs. So they're going to punish them economically. You know what that's called? Mark of the beast. Omar, are you gone off the rails now? No, it isn't. Whenever you see an individual silenced for a viewpoint, you can bet that there's going to be tyranny behind it. Let me explain. Today, it might be conservatism. Today, it might be somebody that gets online and says something that they think is crazy about taking down monuments. And suddenly, the voices in power, multi-billion dollar tech companies, have the ability to say to you, because you disagree with us, we're going to block your speech, we're going to block your income, and what is the unspoken message in that? Well, it is this. Either you come in line with our viewpoints or you will suffer financially. That's what the Bible said in the book of Revelations, that if they refuse to accept the mark of the beast, they could not buy or sell. Well, it's on. It's on in the form of people being fired from their jobs. It's in the form of students being expelled from schools. This is America, and that tyranny is afoot. Now, if you're a young person, and you've come out of some classroom where some professor got you all twisted up in a knot about racism and hate and stopping and uh, anyone who disagrees with you, and you're, as the word says, triggered. You need to understand what's happening to your brain. Now, the most embarrassing thing is a campus that I'm very familiar of with. I was there 10 years. I was there when the anti-war movement was birthed at Berkeley. I was there when the free speech movement made its declaration, when Mario Savio jumped on top of a police car and declared that he would violate the law because the, the system said there were things he couldn't say. Now Berkeley has lost its soul. When rioters come in and burn down buildings and don't allow opposing speakers to say their viewpoints, you say, well, Mario, these people are hateful. I don't think that you can say that. I think that you can understand why you get worked up when a conservative agrees with your liberal ideas. But when you conflate a statement with an act of violence, when someone's words become something that you believe you have the right to beat them up because they simply said that, you have lost your moral consciousness. You are not normal. You need to understand the dilemma that you're in. Christians especially need to wake up right now because we've already been not saying things for fear of being hated. 
Now we've got to understand that all those years of playing nice, of saying what everybody said we ought to say, has ended up what? Getting us hated even more. Back in the 20th, 19, 20th century, in the 1900s, Christians spoke openly on their views of marriage, morality, inerrancy of scripture, everything. And there was a clear line of communication with the secular culture. Now, after years of not saying any of those things, we believe, we are suddenly hated even more. So where was the end game in keeping the truth out of our pulpits? It didn't work. But the urgency of this hour, the alarm that all of us must understand, is that today it's monuments. Tomorrow it's going to be any opposing view. And suddenly the Internet becomes a fascist tool for only one argument to be told to the world, like the book of Revelation said. Let's pray and believe God for a miracle in American society. God bless you.